So I think where I see the future of patients is again really engaging them as a partner in this uh, you know new mode of better understanding their health and wellness and, and how to better make decisions around those uh, elements. So most of the collections will be passive so the individual doesn't have to be active every day you know logging things. Um, but then they'll stay engaged because they'll get a benefit from it. So they'll uh, see that you know they'll they'll both agree to have their data used in this way uh, because they get some perceived benefit, and they'll be able to directly uh, you know it won't be just a perceived benefit ultimately. It'll be your you know the number of doctor visits you require, the number of times you were sick, the number of times you progressed into a given disease state all being you know, diminished and people feeling healthier, more well, and so willing to consent to have their data uh, used for that purpose. And I would say getting presented back with the information. Uh, so they're looking at dashboards about themselves. They're not blinded to the information or dependent on a physician to interpret it for them. They're able to see it every day and understand what it means. I believe payers have are perhaps among uh, at the top of the chain as far as who can benefit from this because ultimately payers want to constrain you know the, the cost of each patient and of course they care about the health of the patient but they want to do whatever they can to incent both the patient and the medical systems that treat them to minimize uh, you know the cost through uh, better preventative measures better targeted therapies increase compliance uh, for medication usage uh, so now your uh, the payer is getting a better benefit from drugs being taken because they're able to um, see that the drug is being taken uh, as prescribed or uh, it's not having the effect on the patient so the patient can be switched earlier to a more effective uh, treatment. Uh, unexpected hospitalizations or, or uh, emergency room visits or even physician visits, right? If you're able to intervene sooner uh, in the course of a patient's health before they you know, uh, uh, slide into a disease state, then you're going to save money on the um, on those uh, unexpected hospitalizations, and then just the general risk profiling of patients. Of course, payers care a lot about sort of understanding the overall risk of a patient and what they're likely to cost year over year. And if we're providing better risk profiles on individuals, for example, say we're able to generate. Uh, genomic information that tells us what the cancer risk, uh, heritable cancer risk of every patient is. You don't need to wait till a lump is felt or the person's at a, a, a later stage of, of the cancer where it's much more expensive. So all of those better risk profiles will, will be incentive for uh, payers to both pay attention and, and to actually be involved in that development. I think from how device makers will benefit, again, I just see this as a uh, sort of a, a revolution that's theirs to lose. Like if they don't embrace uh, the development of uh, consumer uh, wearable devices or sensors more generally in environments uh, where the market, uh, you know, so I'm not an expert in the marketing of the devices, but I have to believe that if every person in the U.S. or on the planet is buying a device versus one of a handful of medical systems, you know, that that's a better better business model, uh, that that's going to generate lots of revenue. And so it's to the device maker, I think, to sort of embrace that revolution and even start transforming some of the devices they're already making into consumer grade uh, devices that can be higher, um, you know, not just recreation grade, but higher grade on towards the clinical grade. Uh, from the phar pharmaceutical standpoint, I think it's major. I mean, just look around and, uh, you know, look at uh, Regeneron and Geisinger. Uh, engaging uh, the Geisinger health system and sequencing everybody in that population to make you know better understanding of disease and protections against disease to do therapeutics. So what you're seeing is is uh, at some level some embracing by the pharmaceutical companies of this uh, sort of information revolution, doing it mainly from the genomics arena, but all sort of approaching it from the standpoint of better understanding disease, having a better understanding of the causal players of disease and using that, or the causal protectants against disease, and using that uh, information to directly develop uh, therapeutics. Uh,